Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guests today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Tab, it's good to see you here. I am so excited for this episode. So for the listeners, the viewers out there, you know I usually meet my guests about three seconds before I hit record. On this episode, it's a little different. I am going to tell you in advance, we have a rock star with us. Tab, I'm so excited to sit down for this conversation and just unpack what you have for us. The little clickbaity title we have is Success Hacks to Get You Further Faster. We'll see what that means. But first and foremost, thank you for being here and welcome. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yes, I love we had like 20 minutes of chatting before. We probably just should have pushed record. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I always say that because I, I get on these things and I get excited and I talk to people. And I'm like, oh, yeah, none of that was recorded. It was all gold. But listen, <laughs> I've talked you up now, so you have to deliver. And I saw you speak previously, so there's no shortage of content here. But I, I want to just figure out you know, where you are in the world, because you do a million different things. You're all over the place. You're yeah. a mom, entrepreneur, speaker. What, how do you identify yourself for the audience before we dive into success hacks? You know, this has been a question I've been getting a lot, and it really does a lot of like soul searching. People are like, how, what do you identify as or what? <laughs> Which is at? a touchy question these days. First of all, let's it's just get that up. <laughs> I am a woman. I am a woman. Okay. And I, I always tell I people, am a I cat. Am, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a dog if we were being real. Okay. Yeah. I am a woman. Identify, you know, what? okay. I won't go into that. All right. So. I am first and foremost, a wife and a mom. Like when people really ask me, you know, who I am and I'm a Christian. So like, I'm a big, like I'm a Jesus lover, that type of stuff. And I hope that doesn't offend your audience, but that is who I am. And like, I cannot cover those things up. And so even when I'm in like a really serious conversation, like I had, um, I was telling Brandon earlier, like it was called like money and fidelity, which was like, crazy. It was a podcast I did and it was like super serious, but like, I, ha I like have to bring in who I am. And I have been married for 16 years. I've been with my husband for 23. We were high school sweethearts. We have five daughters and that is, you know, really ingrains in me who I am because my why comes from that. And for a long time, the why was to help my husband financially. My husband would do whatever it takes, by the way, to provide for our family and to thrive for our family, not just survive. He will do whatever it takes. He would be, he's a farmer. He was raised farming. So like hard work, this is, you know, what you need to do. We became real estate investors when he was 21 and I was 19. So we saw what that would do, like investing in your own future um, really early on. I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And to be honest, it's because I don't like people to tell me what to do. <laughs> and I'm so stubborn that it's like, it's my way. Like I am doing this, right? So like, I knew I didn't want to work for somebody else, but I liked learning. Like I loved the areas that I loved and I love to learn about them, if that makes sense. So I actually have a degree in marriage and family studies because I wanted to, you know, help marriages. And I think a lot of your listeners on here, if they're entrepreneurs in some way, shape or form, you want to help, you have a solution for somebody and you want to help them get better results. What, even if it's with a product, even e -com, like if you are selling a product, you want that product to go to your customer to make life easier. And for me, it was just helping people internally. Cause I was just very infatuated with human behavior like why people do what they do. Why do these uber successful people commit suicide? And in our eyes, they have everything and they're, you know, feeling such self doubt. And I am so engulfed in like biographies of like, um, you know, Amy Winehouse or Robin Williams, because we look at them as so talented and they can never see that. So I was always like shifting to that, but I live in rural Nebraska. And unless you're like a therapist or, you know, a psychiatrist, you know, it's like, what do you do with that? And I learned early on that a lot of times that because I wanted to go more to help marriages because I knew what solid marriages would do for the household, for the kids, kind of the butterfly effect. So I was like, let's go to the core. 
Well, I'll never forget the day I went into my advisor and I asked her, I said, hey, what are my next steps? I'm getting my bachelor's. And she's like, well, yeah, you know, get your master's, get your doctorate if you want to be a therapist and psych, you know, and I'm like, okay. And she goes, but I just want to tell you something. By the time they get to us, because she had done marriage and family counseling, by the time they get to us, most marriages fail. And I'm like, what? Like, I am a results-driven person. Like, I want solutions for these people. I don't want them to come to me like the sinking ship. And it's just like the anchor that's already going down. So I pivoted. And we got married. And like I said, we were already real estate investors. And we had three babies. And all I wanted to do was help the fi family finances. Like that was a number one. And some of you on here, that's what you want to do. You want to get out of the survival and you want to get to thriving. Like you want that side hustle. So you don't only buy the soccer shoes, but you can buy your kid the soccer shoes and the shin guards and the you can sponsor the team and you know, you want to advance it more. And that was a very strong why for me. And it's what took me um, like seven years in a direct selling company, like to keep going and to keep <laughs> persisting that wheel for, for those of you who've ever done direct selling, like it can be a hard game. And the thing was, is I wanted to help financially. And I did, I helped supplement. We were able to do a lot of extraordinary things, go to Hawaii, go to Disney, take my dad with us, like do all these like fun extra things. But the bottom line of finances, like was still up in the air. Like it was still a struggle. It was still when tax time came, like, is this a good year of farming? Is this not like, how's the real estate doing? Do we need more renters? Do we need more houses? You know, kind of like, you know, borrow from Peter to pay Paul or, you know, all those different things. And in 2018, God very loudly whispered to me, like, I need to start my own business. And I'll be honest, I didn't want to. I wanted to, but I didn't. <laughs> I always hid behind somebody else. I'd been coaching for, man, at that time, it was probably 10 years, but I'd always kind of been behind somebody, like behind the direct selling company, behind the companies that I would do like fitness coaching, consulting, training with. I'd always kind of be behind. It was never Tab Thorell coaching, fitness, whatever. And so when God wanted me to put my face and my name and my skin in the game, I'm like, I don't know how to hire people, employee tax, like all the things like, I don't know, LLC, S Corp, like who knows? all? I didn't know all that stuff. I just wanted to help people. And so I did what most entrepreneurs do. You like learn everything. You just like paralysis analysis. You learn, you go, you go on YouTube, you go to conferences, you do all the things you go here, you go there. And they tell you like, this is the thing that's going to make you a millionaire. And you want it so bad that you go into it. And a lot of people are like, you know, call entrepreneurs the shiny object syndrome. Like, you know, Brandon, you've ever heard that? Like, any, like you have the shiny I've object. I've said that on this show at least 47 times. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to put a little perspective here. I get the whole shiny object syndrome, but I'm going to give everybody a little grace and offer them a little forgiveness here. The reason why you have shiny object syndrome is not the shiny object. There's nothing wrong with you. You don't have ADD. It's not a personality trait. The reason why you have shiny object syndrome is because you want the resolve so bad that you're willing to do whatever it takes. You're willing to try 867 things because you're willing to do what it takes. And I talked about this on my podcast a couple of weeks ago um, with the Dyson vacuum. He tried over 5,000 models before he figured out the right Dyson vacuum model. You're an entrepreneur. You're going to try 5,000 things because you want the one model that works. And here's the great thing. All the models work. I mean, his didn't, but <laughs> in this world, like the marketplace, almost everything that they're teaching you has worked for at least one person or they wouldn't be able to do it. Right. Cause they'd be so it, you can't hide anything. So it's not that it doesn't work, but it might not work for you. And it might not be the right path for you. And so that's why you try the thing here. And it's almost been like this negative, like syndrome, like shiny object syndrome. Like we've labeled ourselves. We've like identified. So then we're like scared to try anything because we think, oh, I don't want to have the shiny object syndrome, kind of like imposter syndrome. Those things aren't real. We have created those and we've created them as shackles for entrepreneurs and I am not saying go try everything tomorrow, but I'm saying if you're doing something right now and somebody else has sold you on like this will work and you've been doing what they've said and you've been playing the game and it's not working, 
it's okay to pivot. It is okay to pivot to something new. And that is something not a lot of people are saying right now because they're like, stick and stay with this. Okay. I am not saying that only do it for a week. Like you have to give it an amount of time here. Like you have to give it. But if you've been doing this even for like six months, a year, a year and a half, two years, and that's not all it is, is sucking the joy and the money out of your life. Then why are you still doing it? Because that's what the guru told you to do. That's so-and-so made a million dollars doing that. Okay, that's good for them. That worked for them. Pivot, try something new. Because you are an entrepreneur and you will do what it takes. I promise you, especially if you're a parent entrepreneur, because you got like that mama bear or that papa bear inside of you. And you're like, I will stay up until 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. I will get up at 5 and I will do the stuff because I want a better life. For my family. I want to leave a legacy for my family. I want to help a lot of people. And when you truly do something for more than financial, because I told you for me, it was a lot of financial, but I love telling people, helping people. I wasn't going to just do anything to get money because you can do a lot of stuff. I could have done e-com and actually it piqued my interest. Like when I saw some, somebody at a conference that was making like crazy amounts of money doing e-com, I'm like, maybe I want to do e-com. The one thing that I would say with that shiny object syndrome, you can try new things, but don't question your calling. Don't question why you're doing what you're doing. Because I did that. I was like, oh, I should do like e-com. And I kind of looked into that and I'm like, I don't want to do e-com. Like that, that does not get my voice out. I don't get to help people. I mean, like you're helping them by giving them a product, but then there's no connection, right? Like for me, it ended there. And for other people, they're like, yes, that's where I want it to end. Like I want it one, you know, one connection and then done. But for me, that's not what I want. So you can have a little bit of, you know, pivoting is what I call over the shiny object syndrome again, like pivoting, but don't pivot what you're truly called to do. And know that, like know yourself. I quieted my voice for a very long time because I was told I was too loud. I was too strong. I talked too fast. I had too much energy. Like I needed to calm it down, you know, and I did. And even in my direct selling um, company, the people like above me would like dumb me down in a way. They'd be like, who are you to think that you should speak to the group? You don't make this amount of money. No, 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 no. Don't let don't let monetary value shudder what you know who what you have inside of you so so many of you on the other side of this think that you can't speak to big audiences because you haven't made a hundred thousand dollars or your business is just starting or you're not to that million dollar just because somebody makes a million dollars a year does not mean that they should be on stage and does not mean that they're going to move an audience And so I'm giving you permission here. If you have a calling, if you want to impact the world at a higher level, do not let anybody devalue who you are as a human being because of the monetary value that you've made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so powerful. And first of all, if you're listening and you didn't pick up at least 75 success hacks in what (laughs) Tad just shared, go, go back and rewind it and listen on like half speed because that was that was just pure gold. But a couple of things that, that really stood out to me was first and foremost, your calling. And, you know, something that I think a lot of entrepreneurs fail because of is chasing money, chasing dollars and, and forgetting that we are entrepreneurs because of our impact that we are called to provide and serve in the world. And I'll give you an example. I, a couple of years ago, um, geez, a couple of years ago at this point, that's crazy. I, walked away from spend investing it was spending uh, a quarter of a million dollars on on my dream right and and i was chasing the money and i said i finally came to realize that i too had the very loud whisper from god that said this ain't it pal yep. and it was i can't even tell you how hard that was it's a big sum of money and i walked away i sold the business and i'm i'm here now and the message that god said to me was give first I went through 30 years of life taking with the object of chasing money. And I heard give first. I think it was give first idiot, but I'm just, maybe I'm (laughs) not there, but it was give first. And I have walked by that for the last two years. And I, 
I can't even tell you the change in my life since then. So it's it's connecting with that why, but it's being motivated yeah. by the right things too. That's where people, that's where I see most people fail, most small businesses. Yeah. I'm curious how you feel about that. I mean, obviously you hinted at it, but it's it's got to be the right why. Am I am I hearing yeah. that right? Yes. So like you, I mean, you've heard this, um, Simon Connect, he's talking, you know, the, the, the power of why that book is like yeah. phenomenal. And everybody has heard that it's probably been a decade now. I say a few years ago, but then I look back, I'm like, Oh, it's been 10. I don't know where the time goes, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, the power of why for me to get, here's the thing too. You, again, I'm going to, I'm going to reiterate this point too: grace and forgiveness of yourself. Because if you're in this and you're like beating your head, like, oh my gosh, I have been chasing the money. Oh, I'm so wrong. You're not wrong. That's what got you started. What got me started was the money. Like, to be honest, it was like, I could have been like uncomfortably comfortable with our two daughters and them not seeing their dad because he would leave when they would be asleep and he would come home and they'd be asleep. And I lived that life. That was my life. I, I hated my dad growing up because all I wanted was his time. There's something inside of you, something that happened. And I'm not, again, this isn't a therapy session, but there's something that happened to you when you were younger, that is a wound or whatever. And it's going to fuel you in the beginning. And it's okay because you need that fuel because this road of entrepreneurship is hard. And so that wound is some sort of passion in there. That's like, I want this, like I want money because I never had name brand clothes or I want money because my mom was always in the hospital and my parents could barely pay the medical bills. Actually, they couldn't. They were always, always owing somebody and I didn't want to owe people. So like when I came into the marriage, I was like, we're not going to have debt. We're not going to have this, we're not that. Well, guess what? We're farmers. So you have to have debt. Like you just do. You have to borrow money when you have equipment that's $500,000 to produce um, crop. So like, I had to switch and rewire some things of what I thought things meant. And then the drive of that, it was okay. It was okay that I wanted to start that direct selling company for money because if that wasn't the driver, I would have never like messaged all my people like, hey, buy these supplements. Or I would have never cold called. I would have never drove to El Paso which is 16 hours from where I live to help a distributor get started. Like I would have never done those things just to help Crystal. Like I wanted to help Crystal, but for me to get into my car and drive through a blizzard had to be deeper. It was financial. And so I'm going to be real with that. It's okay that you have that kind of starting point or like you that is in your vision. Like you want a dream house, you want this, but it can't be what is the only thing because like I said, I could have pivoted to e I could have pivoted, you know, there's a lot of things in the online world that I could have learned and done and been really unhappy with. But because mine was tied together with impact and income, because like you can't always chase your calling, you, like what we call the broke difference maker. You do have to figure out how to, you, you know, make <laughs> yeah, financial, like you have to figure out how to monetize stuff too. Not only for you, but it helps your listeners. It helps your customers. It helps your prospects because when they have to like pay to pay attention, like listening to podcasts is great. I do it all day long, but I can't tell you how many podcasts that I've listened to. And I'm like, who was that speaker again? I can't remember. But when they have like an offer or something that like they tied together, something that really got me to trust them. And then they have like this offer, even if that was offered to like check out their website or a freebie or something, I'm clicking on that. And then I'm looking at them and I've connected them with them through a podcast. Then I go to their website and then I see about them. I'm like, okay, and maybe I do a strategy call. Right. So like, if they just said, hey, like I'm Tabitha Thorell, this is me, this is great, learn how to speak, da da, see you later, you're gonna forget. Cause there's a hundred thousand million, I don't even know how many podcasts there are right now. <laughs> and you're gonna go, me. right. And you're gonna go and you're gonna listen to somebody else and they're gonna captivate you just like I did, but they're gonna have that call to action. So I think it's like marrying that and knowing that. And in my industry, and, and what Brandon does too as well, a lot of people, they're scared of that offer. They're scared of like, I don't want to sound too salesy. I don't want to like, I feel like everyone's being sold to. When you look at it like that, when you look at like the world being sold to, guess what? We've been, we've been sold to for 
I mean, since marketing and advertising, which is like in the early 1900s or even late 1800s, I don't know when the launch of like the first advertising, but I mean, I know it was clear the turn of the century of 1900s. So we've been sold to forever. It's okay. That's fine. That's how you better your life. There's a lot of products in my life that I would not have known about if I wasn't sold to. I get to choose. I get to choose if I want to buy it. Your prospect gets to choose if they buy it. You get to decide, is this heart centered? Is this really going to help them? Is this going to serve them in the best way? How can I add more value to this? I'm going to give you an example. And Brandon, I'm going to give you a little um, teaser to um, the class that we're doing. Well, it'll be passed, but you know, we're, you're going to join me in a class. Um, Henry Hines, when he first started his business, he wanted to put the product, his product in a clear jar because before then products were purposely in jars that you couldn't see through because they put so much bad stuff in them like arsenic and oh my gosh, like detergent, like, and they would bleach stuff like to make it white, to look, make it look more clean and pure. And they would put bleach. I'm not even kidding. Like stomach cancer and the turn of the century was atrocious because of that. Okay. He wanted to put it in clear bottles so you could see it. So you could see that it was the purest tomatoes. Like, like this was the thing, right? So he had a product and he wanted to serve his audience better. So people actually were ingesting good things. So even if it's a product and you want to serve your audience and the higher level, that's how you do it. That's how you differentiate. And it's crazy to me when I still see so many top notch companies doing products in a way that is not connecting to their audience. And there was a big one. I'm not going to say any names because I don't want to get sued. But there was a big one this spring into summer. And what they did was they thought they were doing the thing that like was correct instead of looking at their audience. You it's have to say We've done case study upon case study on this show, on our other podcast. It's Bud Light. And I said okay. it. She didn't say it. <laughs> We they could unpack didn't, that for six episodes. Yeah. They didn't look at their audience. Like I I have nothing against like the, the people that they were, you know, targeting or whatever, but that's not their ideal client. It never has been. And I know because I live in rural Nebraska and we're their ideal client. Okay. We are like, like, you know, I don't even say like rednecky, but you know, we're like in the back of our pickup truck on a Saturday night, like under the stars, like drinking a Bud Light, like chilling back, like with our kid, like our kids are playing in the cornfields and we're drinking a Bud Light. Like that is their market. And they skewed from it. And that was their loyal market. I'm talking like people tattoo their logo on their leg, like entire sleeves. That's how devoted of fans they have. And all it took was them taking the eye off that, of serving that client. And it went, <sighs> you better believe people were covering up their tattoos. They're going in and they're like, you know, they're not having it anymore. And I know because my husband was a big Budweiser fan. Like he loved Bud Heavy. Like it was, you know, he does it now because he's old. But like when he was younger, <laughs> that was his thing, right? And they just, they took their eye off the prize. And why am I telling you this? Because they lost sight in a way of their, you can say their calling or the connection when they produced that beer, it was for that all American blue collar guy who's worked at eight, 12, 14 hour shift comes home and just wants to kick back and like have a beer. Like that's why it was created. And they lost sight of that. Disney's another one. They lost sight of Walt Disney's vision. In my opinion, this is my opinion. I'm not making any claims, but like, in my opinion, we are Disney fans. We love going to Disney World. We love Disney movies. They've taken their eye off of who their ideal client is that Walt Disney wanted to serve. He wanted to serve the all American family and bring them experiences of all American values of and, and not even American, family values. I mean, Shanghai has, Paris have, they have all Disney World. Like they want that. And if you've ever been, you know, it engulfs them. It's an experience. 
So if you can match the, your calling, who you're called to serve with an experience that allows them for you to serve them at a higher level, like recipe for success, you take your eye off the prize of that. Yeah. Disaster. And here's a fun fact for you. So in our last uh, three master classes, we have used, this is how I know we're just, we're so aligned. We have used <laughs> Heinz, Bud Light, and Disney as our three prominent examples of what happens when a mission of a company gets completely offline and they abandon their audience. So amazing. First of all, we did not plan this. If you mm -hmm. heard anything else that we do here at What If, uh, you know I'm not making this up, but um, I don't know about you, but I want more tab. I, this, has been, this has been phenomenal. I, you delivered, I promise. So thank you for, for upholding my promise. But um, yes. where, where do we find more tab? You already hinted at it. I, when this airs, yes, it's in the past, a masterclass training that I'm jacked up for in a couple of days, but you yes. have more trainings going on. I'm going to put it on the screen. Can you tell us a little bit about where we can learn more about you and how to speak like a pro? <laughs> yes. So, um, like I said, I've been a coach for over 16 years and I, I started in fitness and nutrition, morphed into personal development relationships, family. Like I said, I have a family of seven, my five daughters, and then me and my husband. So I love to give the knowledge that I receive. Cause I feel like once I receive it, it is my responsibility to give it back. And so this will be uploading more and more, but tabs trainings is where it's like my vault of all of the things. And you click on an area, like if you want fitness, you're going to go there. You're going to get tips and tricks, maybe some of my lives, maybe some PDFs, whatever in there that you can grab and it will serve you. Like they're free. They're great. It's like you put your email list in and really we just do that because we want to stay connected. If we do any events or anything um, along the areas that you are, you know, jacked about, we want you to know about them. So there's like, there's fitness, relationship, business, marriage, like parenting, all those different things. And as I do trainings, I put them in there. They're free. It's great. Um, Brandon alluded to this, like master classes. I love serving an audience live. And so I love to like host different master classes, different trainings, and just really serve you in whatever area. And right now, I see a need for more speakers and more storytelling because we are a very visual society and everything is like instant, you know, and 30 second reels, 15 second reels and funny things and the serious things and, and what's this. And there's a lot of noise out there. And it's like, I like to cut through the noise and give you quantum leaps. And I see a lot of fear in online course creators and speakers and be like um, beginning coaches and stuff like afraid to do offers and different things like that. So we have different trainings to serve you and they'll be posted on tabs trainings. Like if there's a, web, a webinar web class coming up that you can attend, it should, it'll be on there. And I also have the what went wrong podcast. That is my new podcast that I launched this year and where I interview or tell stories about successful entrepreneur entrepreneurs, but not about their successes. Like we touch on that, but we dive deep into their failures and it's, um, about bouncing back from failure, what they went through, like really deep, like even deeper than, you know, even what Brandon and I went through today, like going deep of where they struggled, that failure that almost cut them out of the game. Because most entrepreneurs are like one failure away from quitting. And I want you to know, and I want you to hear stories of people who have failed and got up and failed and got up and failed and got up. And some of the failures are health failures. Some of the failures are relationship failures that almost set them off on a tailspin of, you know, alcoholism and, um, you know, quitting and all of these different things. And I just, for me as an entrepreneur, that's what keeps me going is hearing stories and knowing if they went through that, then I can go through this, whether it's better or worse. And that is where, and this is where they're at today. I can go through this. It's just seeing yourself and it's kind of like the four minute mile. You know, it's like once you've seen it done, it's like you can do it and you can break it. Once you hear about an entrepreneur, whatever success level they're at, when you hear about their struggle, you think they're just like me. Okay, I'm connected. Like, okay, I can keep doing this. I can get up, brush my shoulders off and I can move forward. So that's what the podcast is. Check it out. Like I said, we do different interviews or I share stories of entrepreneurs I alluded to the Dyson, but there's fun stories about like accidental successes, like the post-it no and bubble wrap and YouTube actually was a blunder. So you guys will have to check that out. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm excited to, uh, to dive in, check out the podcast. And I think, yeah, that's, that's something that 
that really hangs me up with going back to the beginning, the shiny object syndrome and the gurus who are pitching, you know, this is what my life looks up, looks like now because I did this one thing. Nobody talks about the the failures and yeah. how how we're all like three seconds from from throwing in the towel. You are, I am, we all are. That's that's the, the yeah. joy of entrepreneurship. And that's yeah, why we love it, right? Because it's right. Up <laughs> it's like a drug. That's why we do I it. I know. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, yeah, that's that's a little oh man, that's triggering from my past. Now that I think about it, that's crazy. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, I'm I'm excited and, and thank you for being here. I really, I really do have to thank you and acknowledge you because you um it, it's clear you practice what you preach, first and foremost. There's a, a lot of people who come on this show and other shows and uh, maybe they give one word answers. We're not going to name names, but you you are obviously a pro and you help people deliver their message and make that impact. So if you got nothing else from this episode, go to the website on the screen, tabstraining.com. <laughs> Learn to speak and deliver your message. It is not that hard. I'm a babbling idiot and I do it every single day. Please, please take that little tiny step. Go hang out with Tab and me. I'll be there too. We're going to yes. have a big old party um, yes. and make sure you can have the impact you want in this world. Because if you can't speak about it, nobody can find you and buy your stuff and change their life, which means you will end up quitting as an entrepreneur. I know Tab doesn't want that. I for sure don't want that. That's why we the do this show. The world needs you. The world, the world needs, needs you. you. Like if that's all you get from this, the world needs you. Mm. Say no more. That's Have it. a great whatever you're doing rest of your day. Yes. <laughs> this has been a fantastic episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Make sure to subscribe. We will see you on the next one. Thanks, Tab. Bye.